Psychosis and bipolar disorder are mental health problems that affect over 80 million people worldwide. They can have a huge impact on lives, but with the right support, recovery is possible. Talking therapies and support with self-management can be helpful for them, but can be expensive to provide and may not be accessible to everyone. Digital interventions are a way of providing support electronically, for example, through a website or an app, and have the potential to improve the help available for people affected by psychosis or bipolar disorder. But there have been widespread difficulties in integrating and implementing them into day-to-day -day life. We wanted to find out why these interventions have such poor uptake in clinical settings. We looked at all the literature on this topic over the last 22 years. Most of the studies were published in the USA and the rest in Europe and Australia. The studies looked at a range of interventions, including online programmes and apps, examining what factors helped or hindered. We split them into three categories. The person, the intervention, and the healthcare system. The person. Some people liked that the digital support was available wherever and whenever they needed it and found that it helped them to open up with their team. For example, people using an online program to disclose information that they felt uncomfortable telling a clinician, such as pregnancy plans or drug and alcohol relapse. But for some others, the technology just felt too impersonal and they would have preferred to speak face to face. In general, people appreciated the anonymity that digital technology gave, but some had fears about cybersecurity. Additionally, those staff and users who had sceptical attitudes towards the technology were less likely to complete interventions. The intervention. Staff stress the importance of the intervention working in the existing IT system and the adaptability of the technology so that it could be tailored to the specific needs of the individual. The healthcare system. The mental health teams did not always have the resources to roll out the intervention properly. The reasons for this included cost, lack of staff training, but also poor planning. In conclusion, digital interventions could be an important way to improve access and availability of healthcare for people affected by psychosis or bipolar disorder. But they have to be adaptable to fit each person's needs and have a clear plan for implementation in the clinical setting. We need to address these obstacles to ensure that these promising new interventions have a chance to really succeed.